Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. I am so excited that you are listening today. This is one of my Friday episodes that is dedicated to women's health. I am your host, Brittany Ford, and I am a registered holistic nutritionist, and I have extra education in functional medicine for women's health. And that is why we kind of focus Fridays on women's health now. I want to be able to give voice to a lot of the concerns that women have in the biohacking and optimal health space. So today is exactly on point with that. We get into some very, very interesting topics in today's episode with my guest, Susanna, who is a acupuncturist and has over 25 years of experience of functional and Chinese medicine. It's really interesting. We go from talking about epigenetics and how that influences egg and sperm cells and hormones. And then we also talk about the impact of chemicals on us and fertility. So we talk about glyphosate and overcoming multi-generational impact of glyphosate. How does it impact aging and how does it impact fertility for men and women? And then we also talk about detoxing. We're all exposed to glyphosate and other similar toxic chemicals, but what can we actually do about it? Like, How can we detox? How can we manage our detox pathways in a better way on a day-to-day basis? And we dive into her recommendations and different strategies surrounding that. And it was really interesting going through this. I definitely learned a lot from her and I think you will as well. We also talk about acupuncture, which is one of my favorite modalities, especially for preconception and fertility and everything like pregnancy, postpartum, everything like hormonal related. I just think it's so great for. And then we also dive into the heart and womb connection which is something I have definitely not focused on before. We hear about the gut-brain connection or maybe the gut-heart connection, I guess. But thinking about like the womb and what is the womb connected to? What is the uterus? What are our female reproductive parts connected to? And getting into how that connects to the heart. She shares some really interesting stories about what it's like to be heartbroken and how does that impact your womb and how does that show up in your period and your hormones and your ability to be pregnant and all of these different things. And it's so interesting to take such a comprehensive and holistic approach to it because I think that is often overlooked. Like there's so many easy strategies out there of take this simple supplement or do this one thing and it's going to change everything. But sometimes things are so interconnected that we really need to take a very comprehensive approach in order to heal. And that's been true with my own journey as well. You know, when I was healing the cyst on my ovary this past summer, I did a lot. I did a lot. And it took four months for it to go away. The doctor said, oh, it'll go away from like after two months. And I was like, okay. And then four months later, it was still there. And I had to do things like, castor oil packs and red light therapy and healing baths and acupuncture and also the mental aspect of it. Like I did a lot of therapy and a lot of deep diving into like the timing of the cyst. So essentially, which I don't think I've talked about, but essentially what happened was it showed up in April in the month before I got married. So I got married in March and I had a delayed cycle from that from getting married. So my cycle was very long. I think it was like, I don't know, six weeks or something, 50 days or something, 55 days. And it was very, very long. And I didn't ovulate in Costa Rica. I got married in Costa Rica. Didn't ovulate, didn't have my period. And I was there for three weeks and that should have all kind of happened. And that was not the case. And then I came back and then it ended up happening. But then my cyst started and the pain started. And so I had to do a deep dive into what is this from? Like, why did this occur after I got married a month before? Like, what was it? And a lot of it, I think, to be honest, like I was really stressed. I was really stressed and I was not in a great place. Like I was working a job. I was also doing my business full time and I was organizing a wedding, which if you have planned your wedding, it is literally a part-time job. And then 
I think my body just had inflammation in it and it just, a cyst appeared because typically cysts are products of inflammation. Like that shows that there's chronic inflammation in the body. And I think that's what was happening. So I had to heal through it mentally of I'm doing less now and I'm okay with it. I'm married now and I'm okay with it and like everything that comes with that. And so there was a lot of mental healing that I had to do. And it was helpful for sure to be able to help it go away and get through that. And so we kind of talk about that. Like when these things happen, like PCOS or endometriosis, when it shows up, what does that actually mean on a spiritual level? What is it tied to? Let's move past just, oh, these are the things that make you have PCOS. Like this is how you get diagnosed with it. Okay, great. But what is it associated with in the body in terms of what chakra is it associated with? What energy center is blocked? What aura, like all of these different things that are less 3D and more 4D and 5D. And I think it's just so interesting exploring those. And again, you can take it and leave it or leave it, take what you want and leave the rest. That's the point of these podcasts is take what you want and works for you. And if the rest doesn't work for you, then that's okay. That is totally fine. And it will, something will strike a chord, even if it's just something small. Thank you to Bioptimizers for being a sponsor on this podcast episode. I love Bioptimizers. I'm actually meeting with them tomorrow, which will be great to just kind of talk. And, you know, it's nice to do some FaceTime, even though it's over a screen, when you work online and you don't really get to meet people. And there's so much emailing and way less actual video calls. It's great to actually meet people. But Bioptimizers is one of my favorite companies. They've always been one of my favorite companies. You can find them on my website. They actually just released a new stress product, which I I wanna try. It's like formulated to really just help you manage stress better on a day-to-day basis. But I really just love their magnesium right now. So their magnesium has seven different types of magnesium in it. It is the most comprehensive magnesium on the market. If you are buying magnesium, which you should be because everybody should be on a magnesium supplement and most people are deficient in magnesium. If you are going to buy a magnesium supplement, Bioptimizers is the one to buy because it is full spectrum. So you might see another magnesium supplement, say it has one or two different types in it. You don't know that type that's in there is going to help you with what you need or what you might be deficient in. So for example, if you are really stressed, there are certain types of magnesium that can help with that. But what if you buy a product that doesn't have that type of magnesium in there and you actually just didn't know that and you just heard the word magnesium and you just bought it. So the safeguard, the safe way to like avoid that trap is buy a full spectrum magnesium product. And that is by Optimizers. You can go to bioptimizers.com slash biohackingbrittany. Actually, I think that's the URL. Regardless, it's on my website. It's in my show notes. Click on that and get their magnesium. They have a Black Friday sale right now. So if you've been like hemming and hawing and like, oh, do I really need magnesium? Listen, if you were ever going to buy it, ever, today is the day because it's the most on sale it will ever be. Use my discount code BiohackingBrittany. It will get you the most off. Even if you see other discount codes, mine is for the most percentage off, which is great for you. So I want you to save, use that and take, like seriously, take advantage of this Black Friday deal while you can, because they're usually not marked down this much. And then a shout out to Mimeo. Same with Mimeo. Mimeo is so cool. It is a new innovative supplement that has four different ingredients in it that target cellular aging and longevity. These ingredients, so it's spermidine, NMN, PEA, and OEA are all actually designed to do this and help with cellular health. However, they're way more efficient when you stack them together. And that's where Mimeo comes in. Mimeo did the research. They took the time to run the clinical studies and they put this all into one supplement. So that's all you have to take on a day-to-day basis. So you can take care of your cellular health, your longevity, it's anti-aging, and make sure that you are getting the benefits of a 36-hour fast in one supplement, which is crazy that like that blows my mind that they've been able to figure that out. So 
In my opinion, Mimeo is easily one of the best biohacking supplements on the market right now. I think they are one of the newest supplements I've seen this year. They are breaking ground, like they are paving the way for changing how we think about doing supplements. The other thing I love about them is that they have reusable and recyclable packaging. So you order it and it comes in this metal container. And then when you get a refill, they send you a pouch and the pouch is is made out of recyclable plastic. And then you just pour it in and that's it. So there's not like plastic bottles all the time getting sent to your house. And so it's much more environmentally friendly like that, which we love. So enjoy this podcast episode. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Thank you for listening. If you feel inclined, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. These really, really help the show get noticed and get into more listeners' ears. I'm such a small podcast and I'm just slowly growing. So you know, you're just helping out a small business and it would mean a lot to me if you did that. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions about your health, you can message me on Instagram, check out my new website, biohackingbrittany.com, and I will catch you on Tuesday for another episode. Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. I am so thankful that you are here joining us today. This is going to be a deep dive into all things fertility and women's health, and those tend to be kind of my favorite topics these days. So I'm very excited to welcome a seasoned expert, Susanna Poyes, who is a functional and Chinese medicine expert, as well as herbalism, and she has just so much experience in this space. And honestly, she talks about things that I haven't even thought about when it comes to fertility and women's health. So I'm excited to pick her brain. Susanna, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, me too. So can you kind of introduce yourself and share a bit about your background on how you got into functional and Chinese medicine? Sure. I've been practicing in holistic medicine for about 15 years now. And beforehand, I actually worked as a medical assistant for an OBGYN. And so coming from a Western background, I wanted to delve into that. But as I pursued that in my younger days, it wasn't going to be for me. And I eventually burned out of getting ready for med school, pre-med and all of that. I knew I wanted to continue to help women in a clinical setting as I was doing. I found it fascinating. but there, it, something was missing from it. And I eventually burned out on my way through the medical journey. And I came in contact with an acupuncturist. And even though I was in the medical field, working in it for quite a while, it was the first time I've ever heard of acupuncture in Chinese medicine. And after a couple of treatments, I was hooked and it blew my mind. And my acupuncturist at the time I asked if I could follow her around all summer, and she did. And then I went to Chinese medical school, and that's how I started my journey into holistic um, medicine in general. And from then on, I continued to do the work in women's health, fertility, mostly womb health. I loved hearing out fibroids and cysts and endometriosis and things that were starting to show up and women didn't have an outlet. And I saw them in clinic when I was younger and there was no treatment for it at all other than birth control. And now I get to do other lifestyle changes and herbs and other techniques and see dramatic shifts in people's lives. And that's how my career started as a holistic fertility specialist I wanted to have children and I was having a harder time than I thought. I thought it was going to be a lot easier. And I eventually got pregnant and I, at 28 weeks, I developed cholestasis, which is a high risk pregnancy. And it can basically my detox pathways, my liver and my gallbladder start to slow down and function. And we run the risk of poisoning the baby. So I had to be induced at 37 weeks and my birth was natural and everybody was fine until it happened the second time with my second baby. And after that happened and I gave birth to a healthy baby, 
I wasn't satisfied with the doctors just telling me, you know, you're okay. This just happens in pregnancy. It's just genetic. And, you know, you're fine. You're fine. And I didn't feel that I was fine because during that time I was delving into functional medicine. And a lot of my colleagues, a lot of the people I was surrounded with were saying, no, no, you know, we have to evaluate the pathways, evaluate the liver. And this isn't genetics, this is environmental. And that's how I kind of, turned my practice over into full-blown kind of fertility and environmental medicine in just testing myself, learning what it meant to be this environmental chaos that was affecting my genes that expressed when I was pregnant. And since then, the results I get are just phenomenal. And in just practicing on myself and then taking that into how I work with patients now it's just a next level experience, how you can really change people's perception of how they can heal, how they came to where they are in their healing journey, and really actually give them answers rather than saying, no, no, it's just genetic, or it, it might go away, or you know, just pray that it doesn't. And there's so much that we can do. And so from that experience, on top of my work experience, that's how I've developed my practice in helping women and couples move forward here. Wow. I just, I think it's so inspirational to hear that. And I think it's so interesting to talk about the em- environmental impact on turning on and off certain genes and how that actually played into your pregnancy. So can you dive deeper into that and kind of explain what do you think the environmental factors are that relate to that? And if someone's pregnant listening to this right now, what can they do so they can try to maybe avoid that happening? Definitely. When I was trying to get pregnant, even though I was in the community and in the holistic business, we weren't talking about preconception the way we are now. Okay. And so that's something I did not do. I was just living, doing my thing, thinking I was eating healthy and everything else and taking my herbs and then trying to get pregnant. And that's not the world we live in anymore. We have to actively now as women, younger and younger, we have to actively start to clean our bodies out, maybe in our early 30s when we're kind of not even thinking about children. And we live in this world now that we have so many chemicals and everybody talks about toxicity now from cosmetics to toilet paper, but it's really gone above and beyond the levels that our human biology can actually take on. So we are now in a place where everybody needs to do preconception work. And it's not just cleansing because everything is just taxed. Everything everything about our bodies, our glands are stressed to the max. The chemicals don't help. And so when I discuss environmental concerns, we can start as, as early as what kind of food and water, the basics, what kind of food and water are you exposing yourself every day? I come across a lot of people saying, I eat healthy, everything's fine. Healthy means different things to different people. When I was trying to get pregnant the first time, I was a vegetarian. And now 15 years later, I do not see that as a very healthy diet. So in our food alone, we're exposed to hundreds, if not thousands of chemicals every single day. And that's your 80 to 90% toxic burden. As crazy as that sounds... That's where you need to focus on your food and your water, especially the pesticides. The pesticides that have been sprayed right now, our fertility, our hormones, the way our bodies just communicate with each other are affected by pesticides that have been sprayed, started to be sprayed in our population about 30 years ago. We're seeing that now develop. Any woman, regardless of trying to get pregnant or not, Even if you have a hormone imbalance that you may want to look into now or in 10 years, we have to start with our environment. And that comes from your food and water because that you can control. Yeah, I love that so much. I don't know if you know this, but I am developing a preconception health course from based off of my own experience and also just like education. And it has a lot to do with what you're talking about. When I started my own preconception journey, I was thinking, and this was about a year ago, I was thinking, okay, like 
what should I do to get healthy so that when I start to try to conceive things, odds are better and I have a healthier pregnancy and that type of thing. And everywhere I looked, people would just say like, take a prenatal vitamin and don't drink alcohol. And I was like, no, I don't think that's enough. That doesn't feel like I'm like detoxing and cleansing my body. Like I want to actually be as like healthy as I can. And I had to dig on the internet, find books. And I was like, why are people not talking about this more? Like we, you know, when people go through fertility struggles, there tends to be this like reaction that we have of like, oh, I can't get pregnant. Oh, what should we do now? Let's suddenly start trying to be healthier now. But my take is like, let's put you through a preconception period before you even start trying. And let's start teaching you about being like proactive so that you actually don't even get to that state where maybe you are struggling to conceive. That's absolutely what we need. It's this new awareness that's coming to the forefront for people like you and me and other practitioners. And this is where we're at right now. Back maybe 30 years, we might not have needed this conversation, but we do because the the statistics are very alarming. And yes, even 10 years ago, you go to the OBGYN, I want to start a family. Okay, I want to get pregnant. Okay, great. Take a prenatal. Don't stress. And, you know, maybe lose some weight if you, if you need to, or eat healthy. Oh, that was it. Eat healthy, right? Like I said, healthy means different things to different people. But when I look at this, that's clearly not enough good advice. And that's probably why in Western system is the way it is right now, especially with more and more fertility clinics popping up. That's not the answer. I'm not pro and I'm not against them, but that's not the answer. The reason they're popping up is because our biology has been changing. We have a really high toxic load that is affecting literally our egg quality and the sperm quality years before you're 30. And so we do need to make a lot of changes aside from eating healthy and taking a prenatal. Prenatals are not healthy. They have a lot of synthetic chemicals as well. And that's another conversation. And when it comes to preconception, it is a necessary moving forward, but it doesn't have to be scary because what you will learn in trying to just feel better and look better, the the insights change, your internal environment changes, then your chance of having a high-risk pregnancy goes down. The toxic burden on the baby goes down. And therefore, they're healthier in general. We Right now, we have generations of young children that are not healthy. We have more allergies. We have higher autism and neurological rates happening that we've never seen before. So getting healthy with the prenatal and you know eating more veggies is not what we're talking about here. We're kind of wanting to overhaul the system making sure the pesticides, especially the glyphosate that has been proven to physically alter the ovarian follicle development and semen counts, it's proven. We need to start getting that out of our system and making sure when we're trying to have a baby, we're not exposed, your babies aren't exposed and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. So what are the strategies that you recommend that your patients use to kind of detox their bodies from glyphosate and like other similar harmful chemicals? Well, the good news is you can can decrease the exposure and you can decrease how it affects you. And so definitely we have to go beyond the dirty dozen organics. If possible, we have to start doing an organic whole food diet. And we have to make sure you're investing in a high quality water filter. It sounds very simple, but I tell you a lot of my patients, they don't even do these two steps when they come to see me. A lot of people are still drinking tap water. And yes, in America, you will not get a waterborne illness from drinking the tap water, but the tap water is is pretty toxic. And those are very two basics. And then we kind of see how is this manifesting? How has this manifested? Are your glands affected? Do you need a little bit more detoxification help? Do you need a little bit more gut help? 
does your liver need a little bit more help with you know increasing your glutathione levels? So by making sure you're eating as locally, as seasonally as possible, knowing where your food comes from, keeping it simple and as whole food plant-based as possible, not to say you can't have you know any animal products, that's not what I'm saying, but as fresh as possible would be really helpful to first and foremost, heal the gut because th- that's where it comes downstream. If you don't have gut health, everything down the pipeline is going to be slower and eventually can affect your hormonal health, your uterine health, because it is a, a holding vessel. So a lot of toxicity kind of just flows and holds down in the uterus. So this is what we want to prevent. And you can easily do that with just good gut health be mindful of it. And then everything down the pipeline in terms of your organ systems, that's how it cleans itself up. Yeah. I love that. I think those are great points. Part of what I'm doing for my preconception cleanse and program is a gallon of water a day, which sounds like a lot and it is, but it's obviously filtered and it's actually like restructured water as well. And even that was just such a change Although I've, I've always been pretty good about my water, but now like tracking it more significantly just to help flush things through and make sure I'm actually properly hydrated. And then a big thing that I do as well a lot is a lot of saunas and steam rooms. And I just, I'm such a fan, although it can have like negative impacts on sperm quality for men. So you kind of have to be careful with the heat for men. But for women, just this idea of sweating and you're in a parasympathetic state and you're sweating through your skin, which is like such a great way to detoxify as well, is like something that I cherish and I think is just so important and honestly overlooked in our Western society. Absolutely. I love the home saunas. I bought one that it, I, it looks like a foil bubble and I just zip myself up in it and 15 minutes you have a whole body detoxification. And I've tested it. I've tested my urine before I did the sauna. And then afterward with the heavy metal, the heavy metals, it just, it's so, it's the best way to get heavy metals and direct toxins out through the skin because your liver does a lot of the burden, but we forget that the gut and the skin are those organs that help the liver. We can't just depend on the liver 100% of the time, which most people do. And so the saunas are essential. I think like in Northern Europe, they have it down where they have saunas in their home. And so that would be a fantastic idea to start developing that way here. It is crucial to sweat. That's why people feel good when they sweat while they're exercising. You know, you have endorphins running as but you've already kind of opened up that barrier and you've detoxified. Using that is crucial, especially for heavy metals. It's, and it, it is ironic because with low sperm count, a lot of that I see with high aluminum and high mercury levels with men with low sperm count. And that would be the best way to start detoxing them. But yes, we do have to be careful with the heat impact on that area, but it does regenerate. That's the good news. So men can go through a six-month cleansing process with the idea of this is a six-month pause until we can clean our systems out so that maybe the levels of toxicity, especially from mercury, aluminum, and copper, that might be blocking sperm development in the next six months will be decreased, and then we can get better levels, higher quality levels that way. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. I think something that was interesting that I learned when this is about a year ago, when I first started like taking these steps was that you can't detoxify when you're pregnant or when you're breastfeeding, right? So you're not going to be going in the sauna when you're pregnant. You're not going to be doing some sort of liver flush or whatever it might be. So the time to do it is really before that so that you can optimize these different channels and be at the healthiest point possible. Because once you're pregnant, you're not, you're not trying to, like, you're obviously trying to be healthy, but it's different. Your approach to everything has to become different because you're no longer trying to like run at a hundred percent all of the time. Like you have to kind of be a bit more, I don't know what the word is, but like, 
a little like nicer to yourself or like calmer in a way. Right. And so, yeah, it's just having that foresight to be like, okay, that's going to be kind of more of like a wintry vibe, you know, that type of season in my life where I'm going to slow down. So what can I do now to prepare for that? And then the other thing, like you're saying about the sperm, my husband did the, the cleanse that I put him on and he actually tripled his sperm count from it because we tested him before and after. And part of the, that I had him do, and he was super on board for it, which was great. But part of it was no alcohol and no cannabis at all, because those, both of those substances independently, let alone together, have significant impact on sperm quality and quantity, and also his hormones as well. So it just had to go for quite a while. And it was so interesting to get his results back. And they were so high. And I was, I was shocked. I was not expecting that. Hi there, folks. I've got some thrilling news to share with you. The Buy Optimizers Black Friday mega sale is in full swing. And guess what? It's actually not just for one day. It is for the entire month of November. This mega deal is available only for my listeners and only with my code. Yep, you heard me right. It's literally just for us. Now, you already know that I have an unwavering trust in Buy Optimizers. These guys are the real deal when it comes to improving digestion. And let's not forget about their top of the line magnesium. It's truly the best on the market. Plus, they actually back up their products with a rock solid 365 day money back guarantee. No questions asked. Now is the time of year when you fill up your shopping carts and stock up on Buy Optimizers goodness. Trust me when I say this, you won't be able to find a better Black Friday deal anywhere else, not even on the mighty Amazon. The biggest discount you can get and amazing gifts with purchases are available only on my page, bioptimizers.com slash biohackingbritney with code biohackingbritney. We all have those never ending Black Friday wish lists, but this year I challenge you to put your health at the top of that list. Instead of those impulsive purchases, let's focus on what really matters. So why wait? Choose health over unnecessary things this Black Friday. Head over to bioptimizers.com slash biohackingbrittany and enter my code biohackingbrittany at checkout. Let me know what you think of it and don't miss out on this mega deal for my listeners only. People forget that alcohol is all sugar. So that creates inflammation in the body. And it's very interesting because my patients as well, they're like, well, can I at least have my glass of wine? And wine is even sugar on top of glyphosate. No, you can't have wine, not because I don't want you to drink and enjoy yourself or whatever your need is it. It's because we're going to decrease your toxic exposure right now. So like your husband, those levels do change. And every three months, as women, every three months you go through a new hormonal cycle. So that's when the egg quality has that ability to change that environment so that you get different nutrients feeding those follicles that are eventually going to release that egg for egg quality. So you have a regeneration cycle of three to six months. So this isn't forever. And men are actually faster so if you're stopping and going and you're doing all of this good stuff for three to six months, both of you will be in good shape. And that's where we are right now as a society. We kind of just need to do it. Even if you feel healthy, you work out, it's something I wish I would have done, honestly, because no, a high a pregnancy, nobody tells you this. <laughs> nobody told me, but pregnancy is itself a highly inflammatory state, whether you have anything going on or not, okay? It is high inflammation. So that's why if you're coming in already with kind of a toxic burden and a little bit of inflammation, it's going to triple when you're pregnant and show up in the second and third trimester, which we don't because that changes your perception of how you wanted this experience to be, right? Right. And we do have the power to change it, just like you are and your husband. Everybody does. It might take somebody a little bit longer with PCOS or endometriosis, but just trust that these are exposure issues. 
I don't say that they are hormonal imbalances anymore because a hormonal imbalance, that for me is a side effect of what's going on with our internal environments being really, really, really bombarded by toxic overload, stress, and toxic food supply and things like that. And so we can do so much. And all of these little changes you can easily make, you can easily make. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I'm curious about your experience studying and understanding epigenetics and how this kind of can play into fertility. I Honestly, I don't see a lot of people talking about this. So I'd love for you to just kind of dive into this and and give the audience your two cents on maybe what this means and maybe what they can do as well. Epigenetics is a game changer. It's a powerful, powerful concept that I hope you everybody will hear more about in the future. Epi means above, genetics is genetics. So we're talking about the science of above your genes. Most people we grow up, we have our bodies, we watch our parents and maybe they have diabetes or, you know, high cholesterol and things like that. And then eventually one day we're living our lives and oop, I have diabetes now. Oh, you know, it's okay. Cause I knew this was going to happen because my mom and my dad have it. That's the old thinking of medicine in terms of blaming your genetics, right? It just happened because mom's going to have it or grandma had it. The science is really clear that now epigenetics, we have the ability to change these things that are coming into our bodies or around our bodies that are making homes internally and changing the way those genes either light up or dim down. And so, for example, pregnancy is a highly inflammatory state. So that state tends to turn the switch on to these genetic things you have programmed. Maybe I had liver disease. Maybe I had high blood pressure in my genes. Pregnancy can turn that on. So that's why we see a lot of that in high-risk pregnancies. And then it goes away when you have the baby. So epigenetics is just that. It gives the patient and people in general the power back. We don't just come in and say, oh my God, my dad died of liver cancer. I, you know, at 40, I'm going to have liver cancer. That was that back then. Now it, it gives people the power to say, yeah, I know I came in with parents having this and this and this, but I'm going to change things around, limit my exposures, clean things up, work with the right people, biohack my body, make it stronger so that those little light switches don't come on. They're there in the blueprint. But it's all about what juice you're giving those genes every single day. Are you drinking alcohol? Yeah, that might eventually turn it on. Are you giving it enough vitamin C to evade these viruses that are in the body that can turn these on? Yeah, I'm giving it that. So you eventually won't see these things. And that's what I learned in my pregnancies. And that's how I started using epigenetics. Everything in our body, from our food, our water, our thoughts, if you can believe that you can actually use this stuff to help you, or if you're going to believe an outside doctor that says, no, 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 that's not true. That's woo woo. So our thoughts and the stories we repeat about our health or our potential are every day. Those are repetitive patterns that are epigenetic and they do change the way your cells vibrate. They change the way your cells eat and work with you or against you. Very real stuff. And you, you really do get the power back. And that's super exciting for me. Yeah, I love that. I think that's what I love in general, uh, just about epigenetics or even just the idea of preconception programs and cleanses is it's very empowering. Like it's less, you just roll over and like take the diagnosis and go on medication and call it a day. It's more hey, yeah, this might happen to you, but like, what can we do now in order to prevent it and manage it and kind of keep it on the back burner? And I think that is very encouraging to people as well because we need these dialogues. Like we need people to say, okay, you're actually in an inflammatory state when you're pregnant. Okay, so this is what you should do. I'm not hearing that. I Like, where do people say that? Like, that's not the dialogue that I hear anywhere. So I'm so curious about like your own experience when you were pregnant both times, what did you do to 
And like, I guess, what do you do with your clients to kind of help them during pregnancy so that they maybe are less inflamed and less likely to turn on potential bad genes that they might have? That's a great question because the reality is, is most people come to me when they're already sick, right? Or highly inflamed. So we do miss that mark of let's give yourself a year or six months a lot of the time. And so what I did with my pregnancies, unfortunately, there is nothing to do with cholestasis. I, the treatment, the only treatment is induction at 37 weeks. And that is it. And I, after 28 weeks, I was monitored every single week. I had to go to the hospital and monitor the baby's heartbeat and growth and things like that. So at 37 weeks, that was the treatment. Even my midwives, who now I, I couldn't really use the way I wanted to, they were they would give me light herbs, but there was really nothing to do. I missed the mark on preconception there. And nobody really knew how to talk to me about it. I had a lot of PTSD after the first one and definitely after the second one because my medical team said, this is very strange. We really don't see it happen twice, especially to the same mother. So when that happened, that's when, the, and then they told me, you know, your genetics are pretty bad. You know, your dad had liver things. So this doesn't surprise us, but it does surprise us at the same time. So I myself thought I was eating healthier, but it just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And afterward, that's when I really got to work. And I just said, okay, well, I'm not going to have another pregnancy anymore. Now I can really go to town and overhaul all of my pathways here because there's something that I completely missed the mark. And when I tested myself, my glyphosate and other 21 pesticides were through the roof. My, my aluminum and my heavy metal were really high. I mean, I didn't even know how I was being exposed. And then I started to figure things out. My BPA levels were really high. And I had, I was maybe six months out giving birth. I was still breastfeeding my second baby when I was testing myself. So it was very alarming and concerning. And then so after I was done breastfeeding and finishing that, I learned more and more about gut health because during this time, that's when the evidence of, or the mainstream talk about the microbiome and this new gut brain access was coming out. So I did a lot of work on healing my microbiome and definitely in increasing my glutathione levels and protecting my liver. And the good news about your liver is it always regenerates after a certain months. It's a regenerating organ. So give it the right juice and you can regenerate all of these things that may not be working in your favor. And so that's what I did for about two years because it takes, it can take up to a couple years in some cases to get heavy metals alone out of your system safely. You know, I have my own protocols that I work with my, uh, my, my girls or my couples and it's very lifestyle based, but it's in the recipe you have to, you can't just tell people do a fertility cleanse. Like I'm seeing now take a tea, do a fertility cleanse that there is no fertility cleanse. It's a system. It's a system that is deficient. So where are the holes? And then let's patch them up, but then we have to overhaul the entire environment. And so it's a very complicated thing to tell somebody, do a fertility cleanse. That's why it can take three to six months because it's not just taking milk thistle to protect you. If you have to clean out your liver, be known, <laughs> you have to make work on your gut and your kidney health on top of your liver and gallbladder and other things. So it's a multi-universe. And so I, the environment is part of it. And I don't know, I mean, I see a lot of people talking about it, maybe because I'm in the field that we're trying to put these things together and put it out there for people. Because for me, this stuff is so exciting. You know, where I saw my health was during my pregnancies and even afterward, even though afterward my checkups, I was healthy, you know, by my OBGYN standards, I was healthy and good for you. You know, you lost all your weight and, and you're walking around. Oh my God. And you're all this stuff. I was healthy. 
But from a functional medicine perspective, one year out, I was a nightmare. These things, when I look at them clinically, these are things that can lead to cancer or Alzheimer's and very, very difficult diseases that in the end, I think are still environmental based because I can see them change. I see them change all the time. I love that. I just think that's so helpful for people listening. In my own journey, I had irregular cycles for quite a while. And then I healed from a hemorrhagic ovarian cyst that I had this summer. And so I had to put a lot of time and effort and thought into how I was living and what I was doing, kind of similar to you. And I found that the best approach was a holistic approach. So it wasn't enough for me to just be like, okay, I'm just going to eat organic food now and filter my water, kind of like what you're saying. I had to like really think about where is all of this toxicity coming from? What does my day-to-day life look like? Am I moving my body enough? Am I drinking out of plastic straws? Like in the spring of this year, I got rid of all of the plastic in my house and I donated it and I replaced it. I had like metal jars and glass and that type of thing. And I just replaced or got rid of the non-stick pans that we had. And and now we're using cast iron only. And I really had to do kind of a full life overhaul. And it sounds like a lot of work, but in reality, it kind of is a lot of work because we're so bombarded day in and day out that you kind of have to look at your life from every perspective and then think, okay, is this making me healthier or is this making me unhealthy? And And why am I dealing with these certain symptoms if I'm supposedly healthy, right? So obviously there's more going on here. So it really forced me to dig deep and yeah, it was needed, but I'm I'm glad I did it. You're absolutely right. It's definitely not enough to filter your water and eat just organic food because we can go down the rabbit hole and ask what really is organic, right? And so it, in, I, even at the year after I was, delving into my own health post-pregnancy. And when you have a baby, whatever you've done now in your preconception and your awareness and your environment and what you're changing, it's going to quadruple, just FYI. (laughs) Okay, just a warning. (laughs) Then, you know, what? wait, what are my babies playing with? Oh, oh, wait, no, Legos? No, no, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, but, you know, I don't see it as like, oh my gosh, I can't live in this world because it's so toxic. I don't, that's an that's not a pattern i'm putting in my consciousness it's an awareness that i'm thankful that, that i have this awareness and that you're going to have this awareness and i'm i guarantee even if you learn something next month about something you didn't know in 3 months you're going to learn something about something you didn't know and in in a year and it's going to be constant wait till you get to diapers and toys and things like that but Rather than say, oh my God, this is going to make me sick if I'm going to stress out about it. I don't see it as stressful. I see it as fun because there's a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurship there. There's a lot of ideas. <laughs> it's, I think that m- millennials and Gen Xers and even younger, we are going to open the doors to a, a healthier world. And it's not stressful or something to just be like, I'm going to live in a bubble that's not where we can go with this because you can make your body stronger and fertile way into your forties, believe it or not. It's true. And you can have fun doing it while being more creative about things from a consumer standpoint that we thought we needed, but we're just like, we don't need that. And it's wasteful and it's kind of toxic. And what can we do instead? So I think it's, all of this is a whole journey into consciousness and awareness. And if we take it from that level, rather than like, oh, I can't anymore. This is stressing me out. Then I think we change the perspective on it. And that is holistic healing. It's not just about the supplements. It's not just about what food to eat. That's the very, very basics. And that's where we need to up level our thinking about holistic health, because it is the way you think about your journey here on earth. That's the holistic point of view. Yeah. And that's honestly one of the hardest parts to work on. Well, it it was for me, like in this past year of working on my mental health and my stress levels, 
right? Like it's like everything we're saying, like you can eat the healthiest food on the planet, but if you're chronically stressed from your job or your home life or whatever's going on, like it doesn't really matter. Like you can't be in a fight or flight mode all of the time and expect to have such a healthy pregnancy or be able to conceive very easily. So like learning that and being able to come to terms with that and start doing things that are slower and more healing, you know, like I did a lot of acupuncture actually, and a lot of acupuncture, which was great. And I did a lot of like healing baths, I would call them. So I'd put like baking soda and Epsom salt in baths and run like hot water and use like candles and Epsom salts and incense and binaural beats and just create this like very Zen vibe. And it was just those practices that really made me feel like grounded and good in myself and and really moved the needle for me. So I, yeah, it's not easy and it's a journey. And that's what I just remind myself always is like, this is a journey and it's going to be a journey today. And it's going to be a journey in 10 years from now as well. That's right. And you're just going to elevate your consciousness because it's a constant journey of learning and awareness especially you you're starting from what i'm hearing you're starting your journey of motherhood and just by eating and creating that environment for you to decrease your stress just for you regardless of how it's going to turn out in a year or two or three with how many ever many children you're creating this holistic environment that's nourishing your soul and that's really all we can do as a holistic point of view, we forget about that. Like I said, everybody, first thing is like, what supplements can I take? What food should I eat? And I said, that's not okay. If you come, if you come at me like that, that's not what we're going to discuss. We have to, you know, like, where's your awareness level at? What do you do to make yourself laugh or happy? And some people don't want to answer those questions. Some people want to just have a baby because they turn 38 and their mother-in-law or they're stressed out because they heard at 35, everything goes downhill, which is not true, ladies. It's not true. But the stress and the conscious conception, that's the word I wanted. It's like, what is your why in all of this? What is your why? My, my why is to you know be healthy and fun and lively to see my babies grow up and enjoy them while they're hyper little boys and have the energy to play with them, but also make do things for myself that make me happy and live the life I want to live that makes me happy and them happy and help people along the way. And that's just, I hope that it's this elevated consciousness and it takes a while to get there. It's taken me close to 20 years to get there. And I'm always learning every single day because I don't know everything. And every new study I read, I'm like, wow, this was 30 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) And we're just getting the news now clinically. You asked about why aren't we seeing more of this? And it's because the research that we might have our hands on right now, that's very innovative. We don't see that in, well, in Western medicine, you won't see that in clinical practice. It takes a lot longer for the clinics to catch up on the research. So that's why when we just take a step back and just kind of have this awareness of maybe Western medicine or my doctor is a nice person, but I don't want to be on medication. I'm going to put it out there that something else is out there. That's when people show up in your life. And have you heard of acupuncture or have you heard of just <laughs> meditating or um, you don't need the IVF, you know, if somebody's doing this and that, and you think that that's all there is, there's a whole new world out there, but you really have to kind of put yourself out there and kind of things you think you already know you don't, cause it's all a journey and something new always pops up. And that's, what's cool about all of this experience. Let's talk about getting the remarkable benefits of fasting without the daunting commitment of long-term fasting. As a dedicated professional, always on the lookout for ways to enhance my health and well-being, I've explored intermittent fasting extensively. And if you're a listener of the podcast, you know this. However, I've often found myself pushing the boundaries and experiencing adverse effects such as sleep issues and energy slumps and also hormonal issues. 
While intermittent fasting did offer some positive outcomes initially, like many of us, I struggled to incorporate it long term without it really disrupting my daily life. However, my life has recently take a tur- taken a turn for the better, all thanks to Mimeo. This is the world's first biomimetic supplement. This incredible innovation is the accumulation of years of rigorous clinical research meticulously designed to replicate the effects of a 36-hour fast at the cellular level, which is wild. With Memeo, I can now experience the holistic benefits of fasting without enduring prolonged periods of hunger and deprivation. Are you intrigued about the benefits? Let's get into it. First and foremost, Mimeo activates your cell's innate regenerative capabilities, much like fasting itself. This translates to optimized metabolism and better control over hunger, which a lot of us really value if we're trying to watch our weight. Secondly, it significantly boosts energy levels and accelerates recovery, making it an absolute game changer for active individuals like myself. Thirdly, Mimeo elevates mood and sharpens mental clarity, enabling us to be at our absolute best every single day. I definitely notice this, especially when I take it right before work in the mornings. The icing on the cake is that Mimeo's formulation is exclusively derived from molecules naturally produced by our own body. This means it is very, very safe because it is in perfect harmony with our biological system, delivering optimal effectiveness. Still not convinced? Mimeo offers a 100% happiness guarantee. That's right. There's absolutely nothing to lose. So for all of my fantastic listeners out there, if you want to give Mimeo a try and add it to your supplement stack, I really suggest you do so. And you can do that by using my discount code biohackingbrittany for 10% off for the first three months of your subscription, which is awesome. Join me along with countless others who are on the path to revolutionizing their health with Mimeo. Bid farewell to the challenges of long-term fasting and usher in a healthier, happier version of yourself, which we always love. Thank you for listening. And always remember, when it comes to optimizing your health, Mimeo holds the key. Visit their website, link to my show notes and on my website as well, and embark on your journey towards a better you now. Yeah, exactly. I will say with the, like elevating your consciousness, something that helped me a lot was microdosing with psilocybin and just being able to create new neural pathways with 100, 150 milligrams was very interesting when I would do it two or three times a week for a few months. And that was like such an interesting experience in itself to be able to start like connecting the dots a little differently. And then that coupled with talk therapy, like having a therapist that I went to was like really what turned my mental health around in the last few years was like having those two different outlets. I didn't do it at the same time, but just giving myself space to be able to talk to a professional. And so I always recommend to all of my friends and my family, I'm like, you're not in therapy? Like, why not? You should be. Everyone needs therapy. Like we're all going through our own things and it can be so helpful to have a professional even just create space for you to just like ramble about your day, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people don't, do not have that outlet. They don't have very many people to talk to. And even these plant medicines that have been coming up, I haven't experimented with them, but I have a lot of patients and friends and, you know, acquaintances. And I think it's all cool when it's, when it's very safe in a safe, safe place, because plant medicines were the first medicine. There's nature there to support us. And whatever journey you have to take to, you know, with you, you opened different neural pathways in different chambers of your brain with the help of plant medicines and, you know, in a safe space. And your consciousness is completely different than the Brittany of before you did that. You can't go back. And that's a gift. That's such a gift to many people who want to delve into that. And that is a very holistic healing approach. Exactly. I've actually heard of a few different women. I I think I was listening to a podcast And they were talking about plant medicine and it's actually becoming more popular now in the postpartum circles. 
especially for women who may be dealing with postpartum depression, just because a little bit of psilocybin can be really great for mood elevation and bringing us out of fight or flight and more into more of a relaxed space. So it's so interesting hearing about taking this thing like plant medicine and using it in a beautiful way to support mental health with women versus like, I think the narrative that I kind of see on Facebook and like a lot like older narrative is more like moms drinking wine to cope with the day of the kids. Do you know what I mean? So, Oh, absolutely. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're kind of switching gears a little and I think that's good as long as it obviously doesn't go too far. Wherever you want to take it, that's fine with me. Yeah. So I would love to talk about the heart-womb connection. I know this is something that you kind of talk about, and I've never really thought about the heart-womb connection, maybe not like directly in the way that you talk about it. So can you kind of explain this to us for people who maybe have not like connected those two things? Oh, definitely. Okay. So the heart-womb connection is an ancient Chinese medicine theory, and it's clinically relevant. And it's amazing because in Chinese medicine, we do not separate the mind, body, soul from what's happening physically to our body, right? And we have vessels from the heart, you're literally your heart organ that pump blood up and down the body. One of those connects to the uterus. And so the heart womb in China, so in Chinese medicine, the heart is the organ that pumps blood throughout your body, number one. But the second function of the heart in Chinese medicine is to be a vessel, a house for your shen, which is your soul, that subconscious that we keep talking about. And so it's your emotions, who you are subconsciously, your passions, right? And when we see that that has, if there's a weakness, it doesn't pump enough blood to the uterine vessel. So there could be weaknesses in the period. This is a good clinical example of seeing the heart womb connection. If you've gone through PTSD or some really, really intense trauma, some women might not have their period for two to three months following that trauma. And That's a complete example of the heart-womb connection, that trauma that has disturbed the shen, the soul, your emotional being has put a, there's a blockage, there's a weakness from pumping blood to your reproductive organs. And that's for safety, right? Because if you're in constant fight or flight, there's no way the body will let you have a baby to protect you. And so it goes vice versa. You need enough blood in the uterus to go back to the heart so that you can have, you know, good mental health, low anxiety. And I just see this clinically. Women with a lot of anxiety and mental health problems, they have deficiencies in their period. They have irregular periods. They have very scanty periods. They have trouble with fertility. Women that have been violated um, in their wombs manifest a lot of anger and anxiety. So you see this up and down kind of relationship with the heart and the womb, the emotions with the safety vessel. You know, the uterus is a, it's a reproductive organ, but it's also a safety vessel. It's a vessel that houses and receives something for it to grow. So if the heart, the spirit, your spirit isn't in it, it's not full, it's not present, then there is weakness. And so there's emptiness in both these vessels. And so that is the theory of the heart-womb connection. And I see this in clinic so much throughout my practice, even through menopausal women, menopausal women who are, are the, the hormones are fluctuating, they're decreasing, they're declining, have insomnia. So the shen is disturbed. So we calm the shen and guess what? Their hormones regulate, their periods regulate. That's the relationship. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Yeah, it's honestly, it's sad that you see that so much in your practice. I think that is a lot to do with society and unfortunately, and how women are often treated. I think like women are 
over-sexualized from a very young age. And like you said, like there's sadly a lot of like sexual abuse that happens and just inappropriate things. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be abuse. It could be even like inappropriate comments or something like that, that you can personally take on that then kind of shows up like that. And like you said, like kind of this idea of like a broken heart and how that can actually show up in your womb health is very interesting. But again, it's like sad to think that this is like what a lot of women are actually facing. And then it's the question of, okay, maybe things have happened in your past or your childhood. And it's like, how do you heal those traumas so that your womb can be in a healthier place? And that is very deep work to do. Absolutely. And and again, we don't have to necessarily have to have like a physical trauma we may just be burning ourselves out, you know, just trying to compete with ourselves. And that might just burn out our shen and our vitality and our adrenals and our reproductive capabilities and seeing that. And you're so right about society. I mean, this theory, when you won't hear this from a Western OBGYN or a Western physician. And I think that's what's sad about the separation between a holistic practitioner and a Western MD and in medicine, women are coming to the doctor when they don't feel good, right? And then what's what goes on? Maybe you need an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medication. And that's not what's going to con- help us connect or help us feel better. That's just going to help mask everything and, you know, drink some wine at the end of the day. We were conditioned in the West we don't integrate these things holistically. So that's why people don't hear about it until they're at their end willing to quote unquote, try anything because we are conditioned to believe, especially as young girls to believe that if you have painful periods, that's totally normal. If you're moody, that's totally normal. You just have PMS and all of this. It's not normal. It's not normal. And, you know, just take birth control. If you have pimples or pain with your periods, that's not normal, but we are conditioned in a Western society to believe that, you know, if the doctor says that this was normal to take when I was 12, so that I don't have clots or pain during my period, then that's normal. It's really not. And so this is a lot of healing for yourself, but we also have, have to heal as women. We have to change the system and our awareness and how we see where medicine is going like I said, when I was when I was a teenager, I started in the back clinic of an OBGYN's office. I was thrown into the sharks and I saw a lot of stuff that if I had a daughter, I would kind of be appalled that she had this job. I would be concerned with what she saw. And medicine in about 25, 27 years, maybe 30 years out since I was in there in the back clinic, From the OBGYN, the medications for the same complaints women are coming in have not changed. It's birth control, hormone replacement, and now anti-anxiety and antidepressants. They have not changed. So that's why we do have to seek out other forms. And I hope that the younger generation and even those listening now have this opportunity to find a different practitioner that not only hears them, but understands there are different ways of healing and not medicating yourself because that's a societal Western indoctrination there of, of our medicine, of our medical system. And it's not changing fast enough for women's health in general and fertility. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I, like I was put on birth control so young and I, I, you know, I didn't know any better at the time, but it's just so over prescribed. You come in and maybe you have these symptoms, and that's the first thing that they say. And you're like 16, and then you go on birth control. And then what? You're going to be on birth control for the next 15 years? Is that the plan there until you're ready to maybe start trying for a kid? And then you come off of birth control and you're struggling to get pregnant, but your body also hasn't had a regular cycle in how many years? So the whole thing is just like, there's so many repercussions of having such a quick fix in a pill like that. I think more people are aware now, but 
it's still like it's still overprescribed in my opinion. But obviously, we need it in society. But I feel I still think it's it's overprescribed. I um I would to close out. I want to pick your brain about stem cells. Now I don't know a lot about this. I like I know a little bit about it, but I know this is kind of something that you also like dabble in and talk about. How does stem cells kind of play into this role of fertility and women's health? Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because going back to the heart womb connection in Chinese medicine, this is the perfect Western meets Eastern scenario. So now we have found there's research that has found stem cells from your uterine lining have been taken from the uterine lining and put into women's muscle tissue that have suffered like a heart attack. And the stem cells literally help regenerate the muscle to heal a broken heart. Isn't that so amazing? So that really helps to kind of not only bring this heart womb connection from theory, theory, meta, meta, metaphysical theory into Western science that they've literally been able to take and see the benefits of having a healthy uterine lining throughout your life that when you get into menopause can actually save your life if you have a heart attack and help help you heal. So that is the importance of keeping a healthy womb throughout the ages from 12 into menopause. Just because if you're not trying to have children at 40, you still we still need to replenish this internal lining so that we can use those stem cells if needed. Hopefully you don't, right? Hopefully your heart healthy. But after menopause, if women are having heart conditions, we're, they're seeing that stem cells in the reproductive organs can be used in other parts of your tissues as grafts to help regenerate all of these tissues. And that's an amazing thing for the future. I, all of it is prevention, so we don't have to do that. But scientifically, stem cells are kind of a new thing that's been popping up a lot. People ask me about knee stem cells, but this heart-womb connection with the uterine cells to replenish and repair a literal broken heart is just, it just took, it was just another level. Wow. That's so beautiful. That's really so beautiful. And it's so cool to honestly hear about these possibilities that are coming in the future. What are your thoughts and opinions on stem cells from the umbilical cord or the placenta after you give birth? Well, I am a believer of kind of everything regenerates, right? And so if you wanted to use your own stem cells and do placenta encapsulations and dry them out. That has been used for centuries in Chinese medicine. It's not new medicine. You know, in the West, since people haven't really heard of that, they're like, oh, gross or whatever. But it's not. It's we're using the stem cells to replenish what we just lost, what you just physically grew with your own tissues, and you can replenish and take after birth and help heal you postpartum. And this is something that we've done for a long, long time. And so I am a proponent of using stem cells postpartum in, in using your afterbirth and, and placenta. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I've heard that encapsulating your placenta can really help with postpartum depression and anxiety. I don't know if that's just like what people say, or do you think there's actually some truth to that? I think every case is going to be different. You know, we can go in there, as most of us do, with a birth plan, how we want it to be, and then something along the line will change that. And everybody's completely different. And I think whatever happens in your pregnancy or post-birth or even before pregnancy through conception, you have to build out your team of people that you really trust and that are going to be with you. Even if some, even if you do take the placenta pills and they don't work for you, somebody will be there to help you find the next thing that works for you. And what I have seen, not all of my patients do take their own placenta, but a lot of them do acupuncture and moxa and warm the womb afterward. And I know those work for sure. I am an advocate of 
warming the womb. And that basically means keep your feet warm and keep your womb very warm, even in cold weather, because it's all about circulation and in your front and in your back. And so these micro changes and micro ideas, every little bit helps. And even if you do have a traumatic pregnancy, you made it out, you have to just give yourself the time to bounce back and heal. I think that there's this perception in the West that's completely different in the East. In the East, in the East families, if possible, especially extended families, they give women three months to recover. Everybody's involved. Everybody cooks for you. People hold your baby. You can sleep. You can recover. In the West, women get six, eight weeks of vacation time, and then you go back to work trying to pump. So that is going to drain you. Just just thinking about your last trimester and what you have to do aside from giving birth and then having just six months, that stresses you out before you have the baby. So we really do have to have that, again, that awareness of who's going to help me? Ask for help. We have to ask for help. I didn't. You know, I thought I was super wo- wo- woman. And now I'm just like, please don't do that. <laughs> please don't do that. Ask for help. And it, it, we're all there to support each other one way or another, whether it's this interview or your acupuncturist. We all want the same outcome. Happy people, elevated consciousness. We're out there to help each other. I love that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think there are so many resources out there for people and it's just kind of being exposed to them. So for me personally, like there are certain podcasts that I listen to probably every week, every other week, depends on the episodes, but just to be able to have a resource of like holistic health that I can tap into and and learn from. And then there's like a million books as well, which is also really great. So I think it's just, yeah, having this support. And then, you know, during postpartum, obviously you want people around you, if you can, friends and family to really not take on the load hundred percent yourself, which I think so many women end up doing. So if someone wants to work with you and they're listening to this podcast episode and they're just like loving everything that you're saying, how can they do that? And where can they find you? Sure. I am easily found on yonisync.com, my website. You can download some free resources there and get to know me better. And you can also book a free fertility breakthrough session with me. I do my own calls. I like to talk to people and build out a roadmap that is realistic. And if we're a good fit, we can discuss that. And yeah, just on my website, yonisync.com. And you can let me know on Instagram as well. And that's how you can easily find me and get to know how it is that I work, how I'm different, and how I can best support you or anybody that you love that wants this awareness and support. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. I will put that in the show notes and on my website as well. So everyone can find you super easily. And thank you so much for coming on today. This was such an enlightening episode and I just learned so much. So I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.